This video is part of the introduction to space progression. Today we look at spectrograms and how to interpret them, so how to understand the speech content in spectrograms. Uh, so spectrogram is a time frequency representation of a speech signal. So we see here this time axis, so when we speak the time goes forward and on the y-axis we see frequencies, so low frequencies here and high frequencies up here. Uh, the color here indicates the energy intensity uh, in the signal. So now if you can kind of listen to this sound, you can hear it. This is an example file. Yes, so we see that there's when there is a speech, there is something bright happening, and when there is silence, there is the darker colors. Now, first of all, there is kind of quite a lot of information in this signal picture. It can be a bit daunting to start looking at this. But we see that there is kind of two main different sound uh, or like events visible here. There are these vertical lines, so like this, this uh, comb structure we call it, going this way, and then there are these bigger blobs here of bright energy. So let's first try, uh, separate between these vertical, uh, sorry, sorry, horizontal lines and these bigger uh, areas of and we can do that by smoothing. So we, if we smooth over this, then these horizontal lines will be removed and we get this frequency envelope uh, picture here below. The envelope, uh, so that, that refers to something like kind of the over the macrostructure of the whole signal. So high level structure. Now if, if we look, we can listen to this signal. Uh, now if, the, strictly speaking, we don't really have a signal here, so we need to um, kind of take white noise and shape it, so filter it to this shape, so that we have white noise which has, which has this shape. This is an example file. And we can, if we compare that to the original, this is an example file. We notice that the, the kind of uh, sonority of the signal has disappeared. So the, the fundamental frequency of the speech signal has disappeared. But we do understand the speech content quite well. So almost all everything of the speech content is, is retained. This is an example file. Yes, so, but, uh, so we can also look at the kind of residual, so when we, when we kind of look at, compare this frequency envelope with the original one, we can look at uh, the difference of those, so what, what was left out by the smoothing process, so, and the smoothing was done in a vertical axis here, so only on vertical axis to be, to be to smoothing here now. And this is what was left, so now we see that these horizontal lines but none of the big, uh, bigger areas here. We we'll listen to that. It takes a second for the, or half a second for the uh, ear to adjust to the sound. But I think you can hear the sonority, so the fundamental uh, or pitch of the original signal here. There's also quite a lot of noise here at the start and the end because the original signal did not have here any any fundamental frequency, so it's uh, it's unable to it doesn't create that sort of signal there. But yes, so this actually the harmonic structure now this so the uh, so this this has the fundamental frequency uh, and all the multiple so if, if for example here would be something like 100 hertz here the lowest line 
and the second line is 200 hertz and 300 hertz, 400 hertz, and so on. So they are the first first line multi or the frequency of the first line multiplied by integers. All these lines, and and th those upper lines are known as harmonics of the fundamental, and that's why why this whole whole picture is called the harmonic structure. And you see that now the, the kind of in the speech sample here, the speech is quite stable, so it, it remains uh, quite stable over time. Uh, speech can have these kind of lives where the speech changes up or down, and that can then give smooth changes in these harmonic lines. Here is an example where something like that is happening, happening, but it's not very clear in this example. Uh, now, this frequency envelope still has two types of information left. There's something which looks more or less constant over time. So here, this blob is the same elevation as this one, and it moves a bit down and a bit up. It kind of goes this, this kind of contour here. The same here, kind of goes up and down a bit, and then there. So that the, these are these kind of over time stable structures, and then there are these vertical lines, which are rapid changes over time. So now we can do a similar decomposition into smooth shapes and rapid shapes over time as well, because this was over frequencies. So we do smoothing over time in this frequency envelope picture, and get this picture. And again, listen to that. This is an example 5. Interestingly, that sound still is completely understandable. Let's try it again. This is an example 5. So, almost everything of the Linguistics, so the text information is preserved in this file. Uh, and that actually tells us that this kind of energy structure here contains all the language information, or not all, but a major part of the lang language information. So these actually, the two first bits, that why I keep pointing at them, are the two first. Uh, bright spots here. Those are known as the formats. So this is the first one here is F1 and this is F2, F3 and so on. Uh, those are formats and the two for first formats they uniquely determine vowels. So at least vowels should be preserved in this representation. This is an example 5. Yes. This e, e, the, the vowel E is here and here, so we see that the structure is the same. This is a, a different vowel, so the formants have changed to a different position. An, or an, e, that is example. So here is e sound, it's slightly different than e, but not much. An, Exa, so a uh, a, uh, they are similar, so those the formats are quite similar. But there is actually a, uh, there, there, there's kind of available tables uh, of formant locations with which you can determine which format well, formats correspond to which vowels. That's tedious to do, but it's possible. So computers, for automatic speech recognition, can do that. They actually do it very efficiently, so from information like this, they can extract the vowels. Uh, the upper formats here uh, are not so important for linguistic content, but they are related much more to the timbre of the sound, so how it sounds. Uh, for example, now one of the uh, Typical examples of what you can do with the upper formats is the opera style singing. So if you start to sing, 
you can hear that there's a ringing tone in that. Uh, so up here there will be a ringing tone. Yeah! And, and that's, that is a high energy concentration here. And actually the, the usual thing they say that happens is that the third, fourth and fifth uh, formats come very close together. So there's lots of energy in this region. So this is a type of things you could potentially see here in the upper formats. Not visible in this example. Anyway, uh, now this was then the smooth, so smooth over frequencies and over time. Now, if we look at what was removed in smoothing over time, we get the fine time structure. So these are then the rapid sounds here. So if uh, let's go back to the, the this one here, we can listen to what rapid sounds we we, we had here. This is an example five. For example, here, example, uh, this is an example. So somewhere here is the K sound. Actually, the S is visible here, high frequency information here. But so this is uh, the straight, li straight vertical line here uh, is here. So that, that means that these vertical things visible here are mostly now plosives. So consonants uh, which which are have rapid sounds, so like p, t, k. Just again listen to that as well. Wow, that's quite noisy. So it's mostly this rhythmic information which is left here. Um, yeah, but so it's in no, no <laughs> way understandable uh, by average humans as speech, but uh, we hear mostly the rhythmic content in it. Uh, so that's interesting that actually here in this, this mood of time we do hear some or perceive something like those consonants, uh, like the X here. We do hear this here, but the k sound is is actually removed. But somehow it it kind of our brain inserts it there, even if it's missing. This is an example five. It belongs there, so we presume that it actually is there, even if it's factually removed from here. Anyway, this was a generic introduction. Uh, to our high-level interaction to spectrograms and how to read them. I hope you enjoyed and see you again.